I'm an SEO expert and owner of an SEO agency with over 1,000 reviews. We've helped thousands of clients rank on Google, and this video is going to break down the mechanics of the core update and what we found out that led us to draw conclusions to invest $100,000 in our content. So there's a lot going on with Google, and the Google algorithm is getting smarter and better. We've seen that with the core updates. We've seen that with BERT, how BERT is using natural language algorithms to understand what you're actually searching for when you put in some text or even a voice search. The human mind can look at a picture and a piece of text and you can make a decision, you can make a choice off of that, but algorithms and machines can't, so they depend on a lot of these trust signals. And that's the key word here. Google is building a lot of different signals and hints in order for it to rank different content. So a recent update from Google on its blog stated, We've learned that sites that demonstrate authoritativeness and expertise on a topic are less likely to publish false or misleading information. This is an interesting brushstroke. In previous videos, I talked about how being an influencer and being an authority and the author behind the content is going to be an important trust factor. But Google dismissed this and said this is not the case and they're not grading authoritativeness necessarily on the author as such. There could be some instances where the author profile and things like that, that's a highly contested topic in the SEO industry. But what Google is telling us likely is their ranking sites and their grading sites. So we have to go back in time here. PageRank was one of the was the first algorithm for Google to start ranking authoritative content. They used backlinks as the metric here and how many links could be counted to determine how influential a site was so it would move up in backlinking. That's why Traditionally, the industry has been very toxic because people have been manipulating backlinks and trying to get to the top, but this is no longer the case. The algorithms look at the content and the quality of the content in order to perform better. In the last several years, we've started to see the EAT score. So that's going to be your expert, your authoritativeness, and your trustworthiness. Okay, so you, you, you're an expert, you write a blog article, you share it on social media, you get a bunch of people excited, they share it on social media, they cite and link to it, but how do they figure out that trustworthiness? Well, this is interesting because you have to really peel back the onion here and go all the way back to your Google Analytics fundamentals. This is where I have a lot of insights from how Google really works, how the algorithm ranks your web pages, how it also influences results in Google Ads. And this is important because if you understand the concepts I'm going to go through right now, you'll understand how to keep your website and your web page in a specific lane so your content doesn't get diminished lower and lower and lower and you're wondering why your competitors are soaring. So I'll go through these points and then, then I'm going to illustrate a particular case and then I'll show you my case. In the online world, there are five common business objectives. First, for e-commerce sites, an obvious objective is selling products or services. Second, for lead generation sites, the goal is to collect user information for sales teams to connect with potential leads. Third, for content publishers, the goal is to encourage engagement and frequent visitation. Fourth, for online informational or support sites, helping users find the information they need at the right time is of primary importance. And finally, for branding, the main objective is to drive awareness, engagement, and loyalty. All right, so we have these five different website types. These are the types that Google looks at. We've got mobile apps and things like that, but more or less, they're all within this spectrum. If you're a content publisher, you're fit fitting that web page into content. You can have a web page that has all of these different elements, but you have to be very tactile in how you're creating a web page. So if you're a content publisher and you're trying to rank a piece of content, you have to focus on engagement, utility, resources, information, so you can keep your your users there. A lot of the time, if you're creating content, you want to link to other pieces of content, and that shows Google even more trustworthiness. And going back to the beginning point, Google has been implementing schema with businesses and government agencies that are likely to appear higher in search because Google sees this as a signal of trust and authority. So a lot of the time, it can be very hard for your content to compete and rank higher because you don't have that trustworthiness. 
We saw this with the Medic update where you have your money or your life websites. So health and finance sites were heavily affected. And what was the big differentiator here? Well, tr on historical keywords, they started going down. But when you started improving the content, the new keywords started going up. So it can be really hard to regain these historical rankings. You may not even receive these historical rankings. But if you think about it, there's only 10 search results on Google. And if you're in those health or finance industries, there are dozens, if not hundreds of competitors that could be more qualified for those top 10 searches than you are. So you have to pivot and focus on new content. And the way you do that is doing your EAT score. You have to be a, an expert, you have to be an authority, and you have to be trustworthy. And then that goes back down to like, well, what are the signals? A lot of these finance sites would have affiliate links, they're trying to sell something, they're trying to book a consultation, where if you're making a decision, you can be misled quickly by somebody that takes you down a funnel that isn't necessarily a good eat score. It isn't a useful piece of content. So this is where it's interesting. If you have a really useful piece of content that's supposed to stand on its own, then you're likely to go up higher in search. So we've been struggling a lot with this ourselves as an agency because yes, we've got hundreds of competitors that have a higher authority website and how do we do that and how do we maintain the rankings? Well, the thing here, it's wax on wax off. Nothing in SEO is forever. You're either in a state of improvement or you're in a state of decline. Those are the two parameters of SEO. There's never anything in SEO that's consistent. If you want consistency, try paid advertising. Your budget can be consistent for the results you're receiving. With SEO, it is seasonal, just like the weather. Sometimes it's rainy, sometimes it's sunny. You have to really balance the two and also balance your expectations. So what do we do to get our content ranking higher? And why did we invest hundreds of thousands of dollars into it? So I'm gonna show you a piece of content that did really well in our site uh, in conjunction to our efforts, our team's efforts, and reproducing this across all of our content, it really led us down the right path. And this is something you can achieve too. Here's one of our articles that we've been continuously optimizing and trying to determine what's been going on. So as you look at the impressions here, we'll have a pretty clear breakdown of what happened is we were all guilty of getting a lot of traffic and loving all the impressions we're getting. But once the core updates started hitting, we started seeing a lot of interesting things. We got hit pretty hard, which means we saw a lot of keywords drop off that weren't too relevant. And then we had to rework our content. So this is where we started getting really critical on how we wanted to retool the, our content. And we started changing everything on our site. It impacted our results for almost six months. We went down six for six months because we were changing everything based off of the tips I was applying in this video. And now, since we did repurpose and retool this content, we're seeing an increase of, of impressions and it's starting to go up. It's going up for relevant keywords, not irrelevant keywords. So in the long run, getting fewer impressions might seem bad, but getting a lot of really relevant impressions for the keywords you want to rank for is a lot better once you start improving your EAT score. When you look at the clicks here too, we were going up pretty good. And even during some of the time, we were getting consistent traffic during the core updates. And now we repurposed and retooled our content. We lost some of that traction, but as Google started to re-index it, we're coming up for even better clicks. Our average data click is going up. And this is what we really care about. We care about driving results home. And this is how we retooled our content. It's taking the hit where you have to take the realization that your content is not working and spending time carefully in crafting and reworking the content is where we see the parallels of success. All right, so you have an understanding that your content needs to be created and it can be evergreen, but if you wanna be an expert with trustworthiness and you're including information about a specific industry or specific topics in your industry, you have to stay up to date and you have to keep updating that content. Like I said, it is a fluid state of up or it is a fluid state of down. You're gonna go down if your content starts getting outdated, if your content isn't very relevant or factual and you're not putting in the effort. If you're lazy about your content, Google is not gonna be lazy about not ranking you, it's just not gonna rank you. So you have to balance these two, you have to invest in the content that really matters, and at the end of the day, you have to think about the user. It's the user that's consuming your content. Google is just there to rank and grade it. You don't need 100,000 people coming to your website every single year if you have 
10,000 people or 1,000 people, if you have 100 people reading that piece of communication and that piece of communication makes an impact on them, you can remarket to them, you can engage them on your website through some sort of other call to actions. They're encouraged to visit other places on your website so you build even more trust and more expertise on your site with these users, then Google is likely gonna help your rankings improve. So you really have to look at how your content strategy is working now and where it's heading because you're going to have to keep remixing it and you're going to have to keep improving it. And this is where how much content do you want to have to manage because this is an investment in your business. This is an investment in your brand. And if you haven't figured out your brand, then your content isn't really going to do anything and you're just going to be throwing money down the drain when you can really take your SEO seriously, be thoughtful, be critical, and and take time. Tell me an experience that you had with the latest core updates down below and I'd like to hear what kind of results you've been getting and how you've been combating this yourself. Thank you for watching the Shopify marketing tutorial. Every day we're posting new videos and we're investing hundreds of thousands of dollars to make content exclusively for you. So be sure to subscribe and share this on your social networks and let the word out. The best marketing content is found on Zima Media.